Next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 10990 in the name of Christina McKelvey on voting franchise for 16 and 17 year olds. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would invite members who wish to speak in this debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Ms McKelvey, if you are ready, uh, seven minutes please, or thereby. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. It's a, a great honour to lead this debate today, but I certainly haven't been leading this debate for as long as some people I know in this chamber who have been leading it for many, many years. Can I say a huge thank you to my colleagues across the chamber who signed this motion uh, to allow it to be uh, debated? Um, I did go and lobby some of them, and I really appreciate their support, and thank you very much for that. But more so, I think the young people who have petitioned, who have worked hard, who have taken part in democracy, will give them their thanks too. Can I pay particular tribute to the Scottish Youth Parliament, who for many years have had their votes at 16 campaign. Uh, there's been many petitions over the years and, and a lot of them that we have all taken part in and signed. Can I also pay tribute to a constituent of mine, Mr Max Cruikshanks, who has been working alongside the Scottish Youth Parliament and has been a youth worker for many, many years and has always backed the votes at 16 campaign. Now, our party policy, because I remember debating it many decades ago now, has always been, and we've always been committed to votes at 16, um, and, you know, a, we have applied that as a government over the very, very limited areas that, that we have. Um, so it was, it was a great delight to see in the Edinburgh Agreement that for this referendum we have just experienced that 16 year olds and 17 year olds would have that very important civic duty and responsibility. There were some cynical voices presiding officer about the ability of our young people to participate in the debate that we've just had on the referendum. Well they were certainly put to rest those cynical voices and they got it very very wrong. Certainly uh, I'm grateful to the member for giving way. I, I wonder if she would uh, accept what I found, which was that actually some 16, 17 year olds themselves were a little bit doubtful as to whether they knew enough to vote. But these same ones have come to me since the referendum and said, uh, yeah, we, we got it right. Christina uh, absolutely. And I've got a few uh, anecdotes of my own of, of some of the young people that, that I have spoken to, uh, many hundreds of them over the, the, the past wee while. Um, there's no way of predicting voting patterns in an untested group. And it was something of an unknown quantity for us all. Um, and it was a bit of a leap into the dark. And that's um, a quote that Disraeli spoke of when the franchise was extended under the 20 1928 Representation of Pe People's Act when it came. And it did come into play again on the 18th of September. It was a bit of a leap into the dark. And John Mason has just made some reference to that where there was some doubt from some of the young people themselves. Now, it took a century for voting rights to be extended from that tiny minority of property-owning men over the age of 30 to the universal suffrage for every adult aged 18, regardless of wealth, property, class or employment or location. And some 3.6 million people of our small, amazing country turned out to vote in the referendum. Of these, 109,533 were 16 and 17 year olds. So I think maybe a lot of their doubts were blown away by the time it came to referendum day. And, presiding officer, the future of Scotland lies not exclusively in the hands of the older generation. We would like to think it does, but I know that all my colleagues across here would have had an amazing conversation with the young people who even stumped me in some cases with their knowledge and their, their aspiration for what they want for their country. And these young people who will build their lives, families, careers, and ultimately their old age in this country. Democracy is not just a sharp snapshot in time for them. It's a process, it's an evolution, a constantly changing arc of responsibility. To work successfully, democracy must respond to those shifts in society. So that reflects the demands that are made upon it. And I think we are taking that very, very seriously in this chamber today. The First Minister himself has said that 16 and 17 year olds have shown themselves to be serious passionate and committed citizens and that there is an overwhelming unanswerable case for giving them the right to vote in all future UK and Scottish elections. Like myself, 
as I said, I have been enormously impressed with the teenagers with whom we have debated with and discussed the question of our independence and our future of Scotland. Camping around my constituency in Hamilton, Larkhall and Stonehouse, I met hundreds of 16 and 17 year olds who become seriously engaged in politics because the referendum vote and their own part in it became very important to them. And I remember, presiding officer, one day we had a, a Yes Hub in the centre of Hamilton where a group of 15 young people came along in their lunch break from Hamilton Grammar. None of them had made up their mind how they were going to vote in the referendum and they all had ideas on what they would do. And we stood in the street, it was a nice sunny day, we stood in the street and had this debate about the powers that Scotland should have and what it could have. And one of the most endearing and, and, and absolutely amazing facts that will remain in my memory for all time was those kids walking along the road armed with all the bits of information that were going up the top cross to see the better together people to do the same with them um, going along the road and they were talking about nuclear weapons and they were talking about pensions and they were talking about childcare and they were talking about they're standing in the world and one person was saying but could we move nuclear weapons safely another one was saying no I don't think so that kind of debate took place in every street in every part of Scotland, and none more so with some of our amazing young people. They took that great leap. Um, and the membership of, oh, I'm sorry to mention, but I'm not sorry to mention, the membership of my <laughs> local branch is now um, huge and absolutely populated by many, many, many of those young people, some of them as young as 14. But it isn't because of the precedent set by the Scottish referendum that the law needs to be changed. It's because seeing young people engaged and involved in their own futures is a fundamental tenet of democracy and one with which they demand to engage. And none more so than my 16-year-old son, who this time last year would never have thanked you for a political conversation, never mind even a debate who got so engaged in this, who was up at 7am knocking my door saying, we need to go and vote. You know, and just to have that, I mean, I don't think I had any influence on him because he's a very strong-willed young man and how he'd vote, but he had just made up his mind and he's become so involved. I think I've created a bit of a monster. He now watches every debate and critiques me on them. I don't know if that's a good thing. But Scotland can be a beacon to the rest of the UK. This extension of the ballot, for once, let the UK government accept that we were right. We have proven it. Our young people have proven it. It's now time to give every 16 and 17 year old the same right as anybody else to decide who governs them directly. Presiding officer, it's good for every political party and it's good for democracy. And I would ask my colleagues across the chamber, the young people who have all arrived in the gallery, including oh, Max, that's bad, Max, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> Every person you see enthusiastic support uh, from the Chamber, but to ask the Scottish Government to use every means, including the Smith Commission, to ensure that votes at 16 are brought about for every young person in the UK. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call on Kezia Dugdale to be followed by Claire Adamson. Four minute speeches are thereby, please. Thank you very much, President Officer. Can I congratulate Christina McKelvey on securing uh, this debate and note her long-term commitment to this issue. Like her, I've supported votes at 16 uh, for a long time. I actually think there's a much wider need for political and electoral reform around a whole number of different issues. And I'm very grateful to her for her recent support for a campaign I'm involved in called Women 5050, which is about ensuring that all future parliaments in this place uh, will be balanced 50-50. And there are at least four other uh, MSPs in the chamber just now who've signed that. I'd encourage my colleagues to do that as well. I think the moment is now. Um, on the issue of votes at 16, I can't believe, looking back, that it was ever viewed as controversial. Uh, Post-referendum, um, and Christina McKelvey touched on this, it, it just now seems like the normal thing, uh, the right thing to do, to give young people um, a voice. And Christina McKelvey was reflecting on some of her experiences of, of the referendum campaign. And I remember doing one street stall in the east end of Edinburgh, and around about three o'clock, the school tipped out and we were absolutely overtaken with S5 and S6 pupils from Portobello High School, desperate to ask some hard questions about the currency. Ah, but what about X, Y and Z? So much so that we blocked the road. And uh, there was a few people on Twitter highlighting the, the this health and safety hazard that we created. And it, it all got a bit dramatic for a second. But uh, there were also dozens and dozens of other hustings that I participated in. Uh, and without a doubt, the most invigorating uh, ones were the ones uh, for young people 
people. I took part in one, for example, where, hosted by Muir High School and James Gillespie High School, where they had 700 S5 and S6 pupils in one place, grilling um, myself and Sarah Beattie Smith from the S campaign uh, about the case for and against independence. And to say that um, the best questions came from young people has the danger of sounding patronising, but the reality is it's true. Uh, and I'll tell you why I think that is. Um, I think young people are less li likely to think about I, the individual, and, and more likely to talk about we, the country, and what type of country we want to be. Um, they're less, they have less political baggage, and they're more driven by the first principle of what we can do to make this country a better place. And I haven't read the full report, but I did hear Professor uh, Ailsa Henderson talk on Scotland Tonight, I think it was earlier this week, uh, about some of the demographics around the referendum result. I'm sure I heard her say that actually the most informed group were 16 and 17-year-olds when they researched um, who had read the most before they came to their conclusion about how they were going to vote. And I think the evidence from the University of Edinburgh actually was it was the age category 16 to 17 that had done the most uh, homework. So what now? Uh, well, we've got a duty to um, keep the political engagement uh, alive and there's a great danger that these people who have a voice will be excluded from next year's general election. And I appreciate the sensitivities of a members' debate, but I have no doubt that Christina McKelvey is actually calling on us to, uh, and David Cameron to ensure that uh, 16 and 17-year-olds have a vote in next year's general election. Uh, I support that call. I've written to David Cameron myself asking for that to uh, happen. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because if you voted no, uh, like like I did, you did it because that you believed the best way to make our country a more prosperous, equal and just place was together across these aisles using the resources and hopes and ambitions of 63 million people. And if you're 16 and 17 and you voted no, you're now relying on other people to vote for that vision. And if you voted yes, you're angry and you're disappointed, and I get that, but there's a great danger that you might be disenfranchised from the political process because you too are voiceless without a vote. So I 100% back what Christina McKelvey uh, is arguing for today. I fully support her campaign and I hope the message from this parliament is loud and clear to Mr Cameron. We need to give 16 and 17 year olds the vote next year. Thank you. Thank you. Now call on Claire Adamson to be followed by John Lamont. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I congratulate Christina McKelvey on securing this debate this afternoon? A very important debate, and one that gives us an opportunity to reflect once again on the great civic participation that we had in Scotland during the referendum. There are many examples of how young people have engaged in the process, but, um, through school, through youth club, clubs, the Scottish um, Youth Parliament, as we mentioned by Ms McKelvey already. Um, I'd like to highlight in particular one group of young people and their response to the referendum. Presiding Office, Scottish Youth Theatre is Scotland's national theatre for and by children and young people. And the Scottish Youth Theatre chose to have um, the independence as the centre of their deliberations over the two years leading up to the referendum. By choosing to use independence as a the theme, it was prompt to ask young people questions and allowed them to voice their fears, to research all aspects on all sides of the debate. And this was reflected in the many versions of the production Now's the Hour. It was performed as part of the Youth Theatre Summer Festival in 2013 and was a, went on to be adapted and performed in many different areas. It was a very interesting and unique concept. The young people wrote a, a letter to their future selves, expressing their um, deliberations about the referendum process. And above all, it was really entertaining. I had the delight in seeing it here in this parliament in the Festival of Politics in 2013. I attended that with my then 16 year old son who was going through this process himself. And he, had an, he found it um, uh, thought-provoking, informed, fun, and, and really a reflective of young people and, and their maturity in the way they were approaching this. There was a documentary by the BBC made about the production. It was broadcast in April 2014. And again, the young people took part in their collaboration in the Cross-Party Group in Culture in May 2014 in this parliament again. Undaunted by a very esteemed audience, which include the National Theatre of Scotland, who were also performing, and a panel that included Ruth Wishart and Billy Kay, the young people performed part of Now's the Hour and then went on to engage and talk to people attending the cross-party group 
and, and give more insight into their experience of what they were doing in, in their deliberations about the referendum. I thought this was a fantastic opportunity for young people. And many people also had the ability to see this production in the Edinburgh Fringe. It was performed every lunchtime during the Fringe process. It was a great reflection of our young people, a great reflection of Scotland's support for our young people through the National Youth Theatre. For 38 years, they have been giving children and young people in Scotland a wide variety of opportunities to participate in high-quality theatre and giving a voice to these young people. We owe them a great debt and a great thanks for their opportunity in this respect. The Scottish Youth Theatre put young people at the centre of everything they do. They believe that every young person in Scotland has a great deal to offer. And they, in their, in their work, give those young people a chance to shine. If we put our young people at the heart of everything we do, we can only expect the same wonderful, wonderful um, outcomes that, that were um, shown by Now's the Hour. So extending the franchise should not be doubted. If anyone does, go and look at the work of the, the youth theatre and these uh, amazing young people that took part in that. And I hope that um, in the future, this franchise will be extended to all elections. And I, hope, I would encourage every young person involved in politics, involved in the, the youth organisations, to consider making that known to the Smith Commission. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call on John Lamont to be followed by Marco Biaggi. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I too am pleased to um, speak in this debate, and I also congratulate um, Christina McKelvey for securing um, the time to allow this debate to take place. And I would also like to add my support to the call for a franchise to be lowered to include 16 and 17 year olds across the whole of the United Kingdom. It is true that my party initially opposed lowering the age for the referendum. At the time, we made it clear that we were opposed not to the debate on altering the age um, for voting, but the singling out of the referendum for a trial extension of the franchise to 16- and 17-year-olds. Notwithstanding this, I fully accept the decision of this Parliament to lower the voting age for the referendum. Indeed, without the Prime Minister's signature on the Edinburgh Agreement, 16- and 17-year-olds would not have been allowed to vote. But the situation now is entirely different. 16 and 17 year olds have been given the vote. They have conducted themselves in a commendable way and they've engaged in the political process. The motion speaks about how 16 and 17 year olds were highly visible, active and made a welcome contribution to the constitutional debate in Hamilton, Lark Hall and Stonehouse. This certainly reflects what I witnessed of young people across the Scottish borders. During the long campaign, I spoke to many young voters at school debates, hustings and on polling day itself. And I was hugely impressed by the level of engagement and understanding that, that our young people demonstrated. It was clear that many of them were taking their responsibility very seriously, that they were turning out to vote and their experience will hopefully encourage them to participate in future elections. That's why I believe that the case has now been made to lower the franchise but I do, do so in the correct way, namely on a UK-wide basis. Now, not, I will not repeat at length arguments about what age people should be allowed to vote. Parliaments have to draw a line somewhere, and it seems to me that there are valid arguments for having that age at 16, at 17 or at 18. Particularly in the United Kingdom, where there is no single age at which all responsibility and liabilities are imposed at once. One age is not necessarily better than others, and across all ages, we need to do more to engage with voters and increase turnout. However, one point which I do find convincing is that when voting age has been reduced in other countries, turnout rates of 16 and 17 year olds were found to be comparable to those of the electorate at large and higher than 18 to 20 year olds. If lowering the age will help to increase overall turnout rates, then that is a compelling reason to look very closely at lowering the voting age. But on a purely practical level, we can't ignore the fact that the vote has now been given to 16 and 17 year olds. We are therefore now talking about withdrawing the right to vote to a group of people who have been allowed to vote on the future of Scotland and the future of the United Kingdom. I think to oppose extending the franchise to all elections, now that the decision has been taken, would be the wrong thing to do. And given the way in which 16 and 17 year olds conducted themselves last month, we should all be proud of them and should be thinking about very carefully extending the franchise to them all on a permanent basis. Thank you. Thank you. 
now call on Marco Biaggi to be followed by Hans Alan Malik. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you also to Christina McKelvey for uh, holding this debate. And also uh, a note that it's good to see uh, Joe Fitzpatrick in the place uh, responding to the debate. He doesn't get many opportunities to do that. And I'm sure he'll be thanking Christina as well. Uh, I have, like Christina, I've been a supporter of this campaign for as long as I've been in the SNP and, and probably longer as well. I have always seen the theory of this, the, the point of the, the three things that you can do at 16, marry, you can join the army, you can work full time and pay tax. And I think everybody's seen that theory, but now we've seen the practice as well of what actually happens. And as with so many big reforms, things that seemed a bit scary and risky before they happened, after they get done, suddenly everybody sees how, how well they can work. Perhaps there's a, a wider lesson in there, but I will leave that aside for another day and for, uh, to avoid accusations of digging up the referendum. But uh, to, to go back to what Kezia Dugdale was saying about the, the questions that are asked, I think it is fair to say the kind of questions you got during the referendum when you were in front of a, a youth audience were different. You would always get the, the ones you expected, the, the classics, the standard questions that always came up about the currency or, or the EU or, or even EastEnders. But you would get things that would just surprise you. And uh, I, I remember the Scottish Youth Parliament, uh, a question and answer uh, a panel there. Uh, it wasn't so much the content that surprised me, but the electronic voting, the instant uh, reality TV style rating of our answers. That was a nerve wracking experience, I can assure you. But at all the, the schools I went to, it, there was just such a, a fantastic atmosphere and fantastic energy. At Broughton High School, uh, I was uh, ushered in to speak to the head teacher who realised that the head of uh, modern studies had brought me in as a sole MSP for this and said, whatever you do, don't talk about the referendum. And I said, of course, I wouldn't talk about the referendum. There's uh, just a question and answer, not a debate. But of course, that was all the young people wanted to talk about. So I talked about the importance of voting. I, I said, leave the decision, make the decision, research it. I'll leave that up to you. But what matters here is to vote. And, and boy, did they do so. But I've had great experiences even from primary schools. The unpredictability of these questions are amazing. Uh, Flora Stevenson's uh, primary, I got asked at the end of a, a long series of quite serious questions, one of those ones that just throws you, what is your secret talent? I thought, oh, oh heck, because it was a bit reality TV, but it was also, you know, what can you say to a, to a group of 11-year-olds, really, in that, that uh, situation? I would ask you to maybe think about how you would answer. Another primary school, I got asked uh, towards the end of a, a set of questioning if any MSPs had ever been arrested. And, uh, you know, that's an interesting question. I wouldn't think about where the question came from, but it gave me an excuse to talk about non-violent direct action, the kind of things that many MSPs have done for causes that they believe in, and uh, whether Trident or others. And uh, I remember as well, in the last two days of the referendum, there was a yes shop that opened up in uh, Gorgie Road, just along from Tynecastle High School. And on the first day, the Tynecastle kids all came in looking for information. Must have been good information, because they all came in the next day wearing yes badges. <laughs> And all of these are great experiences I'm going to look back on fondly. And looking ahead, you know, will 16 and 17 year olds, if they're enfranchised, vote in elections with as much passion as they voted in the referendum? Maybe, maybe not. You know, elections are different to referendums. Are we ever going to have an 85% turnout? But let's remember that not everybody who has the right to vote exercises it, and that is a valid choice that you have to respect. So I hope that 16 and 17 year olds will get the vote. I hope that 16 and 17 year olds will be able to use the vote, whether that's through the, the Scotland Act or, or UK wide. Uh, this is a really good reform. And uh, as was said at the eve of the referendum, I think let's do this. Many thanks. Now call on Hans Ala Malik to be followed by Joan McAlpine. Uh, thank you very much and good afternoon, presiding officer. I thank Christine McAlvey for securing today's debate. Thank you very much, Christine. And there are over 1.5 million 16 and 17 year olds in the UK denied the vote. And during the referendum debate, I debated and campaigned with many 16 and 17 year olds in Glasgow. There was thoughtful and passionate engagement in, the deb in this debate by the age bracket. And there is 
an overwhelming case for the vote to be given to the 16, 17 year olds in any election. I believe that 16, 17 year olds have sufficient maturity and knowledge in order to cast a vote if they wish to do so. Now only, not only are 16, 17 year olds by law able to make complex decisions and take a wide range of responsibilities, they are also showing in practical that they, in practice that they are making a positive difference. Furthermore, there is a wide problem of young disfranchising from politics. During the referendum, aside, putting the referendum aside, recent reports suggest that 30% of young people age 18 to 25 were not registered to, in advance of the recent local and European elections. And there are also the people who have, are registered didn't even bother to vote. Action is now long overdue. It is essential that we let 16 and 17 olds engage and participate in our democracy. Having learned the principles of compulsory citizenship education, to solve this, there, is suggest there, are, there are suggestions such as automatic registration, but this is not for me to decide that that should be the case. It is just an, an example. Votes at the age will inspire young people to get involved in our democracy, which I believe is fundamentally very, very important. Our 16 and 17 year olds engage in many aspects in our industry and in our communities culturally in terms of uh, going and serving in the armed forces, for example, working in industry, getting married and having fa a family. These are more dangerous and more important issues than a vote. And if they can participate in those issues, then why not the vote? Hence, so much not to make the 16 and 17 year olds overweight, it is squandering their energy, their passion and enthusiasm in participating in democracy. And I think we as a community and as a nation suffer for that shortfall. I think it's very important that our young uh, at 16 and 17 are made to realize that we actually do value their um, ideas and their uh, aspirations. If they're not allowed to vote, I believe that there's a segment of our community missing in real terms. And hence, it's important that even people who are at schools, uni colleges and universities uh, are made, made to believe and they, they, they see it practically that uh, we as a community take their, their views seriously. They're allowed to participate in decision making. And I think what's more important is that it will then hopefully encourage them to continue to use the vote throughout their lives, which is, I think is very important. If democracy is, if democracy is to survive, we must allow our young, as we do in our schools and colleges, to be educated in democracy. I believe they are the right. I think the time is right. And therefore, I support the 16 and 17 year olds to vote, not only in Scotland, but all of the UK for all elections. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, call on Joan McAlpine, after which we'll move to the Minister for the closing speech. Thank you. I too would like to congratulate Christina McKelvey for securing this very important debate and such a timely one as well. I wanted to start by listing some of the arguments against extending uh, the franchise. For example, 90% 90, 90 of them don't want the vote. Um, the, the benefit doesn't outweigh the expense. It will cause division in families. Politics is corrupting. And of course, they don't know enough about the serious issues. Those arguments were not ones that were put recently against young people getting the vote. They were put against women getting the vote back in the, in the days of women's suffrage. And of course, some of them were, of course, repeated um, uh, to stop uh, the, the franchise being extended to 16 and 17 year olds. They seem as absurd now as denying women the vote for those reasons. And that's why I feel very confident listening to the debate right across the parliament today that we will see an extension of the suffrage to 16 and 17 year olds. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, praising the role of schools in particular um, in educating young people uh, in democracy um, in the course of the referendum debate because I think it was very, very notable that the, the journey that young people 
travelled on in the course of the referendum campaign. And if you could just indulge me, I'd like to praise the schools that I participated in debates in, which would be Trinent Secondary, Jedburgh Grammar, Langham Academy, Dumfries High, Dumfries Academy, St Joseph's and Dumfries, DNG College, Moffat Academy, Wallace Hall Academy, and Annan Academy, and out with my constituency region, I stepped in for a colleague at Clevedon Secondary, just up the road from my house. And in all of these debates, I, I was really struck by the effort that the teachers and the pupils, indeed, who were often involved in organising the debates, had put in to make them happen, because it's not an easy thing to pull off. The curriculum is, is busy, and yet, you know, it's really quite a logistic exercise. So I think they should be congratulated and congratulated as well in the way that they prepare the pupils um, because if we extend the franchise in future to 16 and 17 year olds I think it will benefit all voters because it will it will start you'll start educating young people when they're at school when they have access to good clear quality balanced information not just through the media and I think that will make them good citizens and political participants um, for the rest of their lives and I think that's very important um, in terms of um, the teachers um, Modern studies teachers in particular played a really important role in organising a lot of these debates. I'm not saying it was exclusively modern studies teachers, but um, certainly in the schools I spoke in, they certainly played a prominent role. Um, I would just make, perhaps make the observation that going forward, if we get the vote to 16 and 17 year olds and we continue this level of political education in schools, that it, it, we have to find a way to make sure it's consistent and it reaches uh, it reaches all pupils because um, modern study is a fantastic subject and it would be great if everyone took it and it's a real pride in the Scottish education system but I think perhaps um, we should look at how we can, cons we can roll out the best quality political education to all our 16 and 17 year olds um, I too had experience in the last few weeks of running many street stalls around uh, different towns in the south of Scotland many of which were close to schools and we benefited from the marvellous weather in the last few weeks that allowed us to engage uh, uh, with young people and uh, one of the, the, the best memories was in, in the town of Moffat and seeing three fifth year pupils from Moffat Academy sitting on a park bench in the sunshine at their lunchtime reading the wee blue book which was one of our materials and, and being absolutely focused on that. Um, I would also going forward to suggest that uh, that I think a lot of young people got engaged in the campaign towards the end and a lot of our debates were really about six months before the campaign. Six months is a long time in the life of a 16 year old. So I would be keen in future if we see this extension of the franchise to ensure that the activity takes place in schools as close to, to the vote as possible and really captures that, that kind of sense of excitement that we saw in the last few weeks of the campaign. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now call Minister Joe Fitzpatrick to wind up the debate on behalf of the Government. Minister, seven minutes, so thereby, please. Okay, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I add my congratulations and thanks to Christina McKelvey for bringing such an important and timely debate to the Chamber. The referendum was a remarkable demonstration of democracy at its best, and I, I do think that this afternoon's debate has been a demonstration of this Chamber at its best too. Um, we've heard impassioned speeches as members of recalled the engagement, energy and considered contributions of young people to the debate on Scotland's future. Claire um, talked about the youth theatre and how that was a great reflection of our Claire Adamson, sorry, a great reflection of our young people. Um, Joe McAlpine, I think, very importantly um, articulated and praised the role of, of schools in, in making sure our young people had the information that they required and in order to, as Hanzala Malik put it, take part in a passionate debate. Um, but it was right, I think, that Christina McKelvey um, started off by thanking our ambitious young people, um, who I think largely made sure that this came about and made sure that we did have the uh, votes at 16 for the referendum. But, but I think it was also important that Christina McKelvey um, acknowledged others, perhaps longer in the tooth, who have been campaigning for votes at 16 for a very, very long time, and some of them are in, in, in the chamber here today. Um, 
A lot has been said about the record-breaking turnout and unprecedented levels of engagement amongst the people of Scotland, but it's crucial that going forward we continue to engage and enthuse the people of Scotland. In particular, we, we, we mustn't lose the momentum in respect of the substantial number of people who voted for the first time. Now, around 109,000 of those were 16 and 17-year-olds, a huge number of people. The 18th of September was the first time that 16 and 17-year-olds were entitled to vote in a national, national poll. It was a, a policy which the SNP government has had as a policy for a long time. We've always believed, as I think uh, Christine McKelvey said, in the extension of the franchise to 16 and 17-year-olds, where we can do, do so, and we've done that in the Parliament, where we've, we've had the powers. But I know that is the, the position of um, probably everyone who's in the chamber today and, and a very large number of people um, across the parties who are, who are not with us just now. But when this government introduced the Scottish Independence Referendum Franchise Bill in 2013, there was not universal um, agreement for the principle of enfranchising 16, 17 year olds to vote in the referendum. Members of the parliament, and I think particularly the referendum committee, should be proud of the way that they scrutinised the Scottish Government's proposals and for their constructive and pragmatic approach. And that, that was the case for members of that committee and members of the parliament, irrespective of where they stood in the principle of the franchise. They all um, made sure if this is going to happen, they made sure that we did it properly and safely, and they managed to devise um, a workable system for safely extending the franchise. And it's a measure of the strength of those proposals and this Parliament's work that these arrangements received broad support across the political spectrum and amongst key stakeholders such as child protection groups and electoral administrators, um, both before and after the referendum. As I say, um, at the time, not everyone agreed with the principles, but um, I think, as, as Kezias Dugdale said, sometimes you can't believe that it was ever viewed as a contradiction, as, as controversial now when you look, look back, but, but it really was. And I think it has been a pleasure to witness the democratic engagement of our young people, proud to claim the right to register their vote in a question about the future of their country, and it's no longer controversial. Um, I think it was Marco Biaggi who touched on the fact that the, the arrangements work to such good effect that they now provide us with a, a template of how the franchise could be extended, not just here in Scotland, but elsewhere in the UK, and, and maybe there's other jurisdictions who will be looking at how things worked here in Scotland. Um, and I was particularly pleased to hear John Lamont's um, support for that position of the franchise being extended for, for all elections. The Scottish Parliament already has a range of powers um, in regard to local government elections, and we've used these, I think, to, to good effect. But Westminster does retain responsibility for the franchise, the method of electing members to the Scottish Parliament, and the length of tenure of this Parliament. Sections 1 to 3 of the Scotland Act 2012 will devolve some, but not full, responsibility for the administrations of those elections. Those sections will be commenced as soon as possible to ensure that we can prepare for the Scottish Parliament elections in 2016. However, even after the commencement of those sections, the Scottish Parliament will still be without some key powers in relation to the election of its members. Now, let me be clear. Without powers additional to those being devolved by the Scotland Act in 2012, we cannot legislate to allow 16- and 17-year-olds to vote in the elections for this Parliament in May 2016 or indeed the local elections in 2017 and I, I hope colleagues will strongly agree that this parliament must have these powers. The referendum and its underpinning legislation were made in Scotland and there's no reason why we shouldn't, that shouldn't be the case for all elections going forward. Um, with the Scottish elections now just 20 months away, we've, the government has written to the UK government requesting, as a matter of urgency, the devolution of these remaining responsibilities for elections to the Scottish Parliament and to local elections in Scotland. We've also urged the UK government to bring forward legislation at Westminster to lower the voting age for its elections too, um, I think resonating with what uh, John Lamont said. Presenting officer, in the run-up to the referendum, I was privileged to join Cabinet colleagues at a number of events to engage thousands of people on our proposals for Scotland's future. One of these events was specifically designed to interact and listen to our young people. Held in SEC in Glasgow and jointly organised with the Scottish Youth Parliament, Young Scot 
and Youth Link Scotland, supported by other youth organisations. The range of subjects discussed at that event were varied, covering education, constitution, defence, young carers, the environment and much more. But there was one question, presiding officer, that a very articulate young woman put to me, which, which I think stood out for me. Um, she asked, I think very reasonably, if 16 and 17 year olds would get to vote in the elections to the Scottish Parliament in 2016. An election which at the time, of course, I had hoped would be for the first independent Scottish Parliament. I answered that in line with SNP policy, an SNP government and an independent Scotland would legislate to reduce the voting age to 16 for all elections. But what about the election in May 2016 was, was her, her retort. Um, you can't give us the vote, then take it back, she said. That would be wrong, she said. And you know, she was absolutely right. It won't be an election for an independent Scotland, but it would be a travesty if we can't find a way to ensure that 16 and 17 year olds are enfranchised to vote in that election. Presiding officer, Scotland's young people have amply demonstrated their enthusiasm, engagement and willingness to participate in our democratic processes. They have not taken their responsibility lightly and neither should we. I sincerely hope that therefore the UK Government will take proper note of the positive experiences that we have had here in Scotland so that we can ensure that all 16 and 17 year olds are able to vote in all future elections. Thank you. Many thanks. And I thank you all and I now suspend this meeting until 2.30. Thank you.